Welcome to Hiraith, a home for the left in Wales. We're joined tonight by three different parties, our first attempt at a multi-party pod, all at different stages of their relationship with the Senev. We're joined tonight by the Liberal Democrats, the Wales Green Party and the Communist Party of Britain. Coming from the Liberal Democrats, we have uh, Lynette Parrott, the former uh, Assembly Member for South Wales Central between 2011 and 2016. Hello, Lynette. Hi there. Uh, we also have James Gibson Watt, the leader of the Welsh Le Liberal Democratic Group on the Powys Council. Hello, James. Hello. Uh, from the Green Party, we have Sean Thomas, Green Party candidate for the Ronda in December's general election. Hello, Sean. Hello. Uh, we also have the deputy leader of the Wales Green Party, Lauren James. Hello, Lauren. Hello. And from the Communist Party of Britain, we have Catherine Ashton, who is the lead candidate in Mid and West Wales in the 2016 election. Hiya, Shemai. Shemai. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. We're going to start by talking a little bit about uh, the Liberal Democrats. In 2016, the Liberal Democrats saw the loss of all but one of their AMs, and 2017 saw the loss of Kerry Digion, and 2019 saw the the loss of Brecon and Radnorshire. Do you think that the Liberal Democrats are still a serious electoral prospect in Wales? Absolutely. If you have a look at what's happened over the last few years, you'll also have seen that we, um, across England, but then we didn't have elections in Wales, we had a big increase in the number of council seats that we um, won, and we also had a really good um, result in the European elections, the highest number of MEPs we've ever elected, and really close to an MEP here in Wales as well. So I think that um, we have um, a party that knows that it's been on the ropes, but knows also that it can uh, grow and it can be a force to be reckoned with. I think, I think also you have to, I think we have to understand the elections of, of 17 and 19 were, were very heavily uh, influenced by the Brexit issue, um, which meant that votes went all over the place and people voted for parties that they'd never voted for before and wouldn't have considered doing so. And it, it always was going to be a difficult issue for the Liberal Democrats, given the fact that we've always been um, very uh, clearly and, and uh, for a long or for all of our existence, a pro-European party believing strongly in Britain's place within the European Union. So on an issue as polarising as Brexit, you know, it's always going to cause difficulties for us at, at, a, at a domestic election, if you like. Now, but I think now that that issue, well, it isn't settled, but it is kind of settled and perhaps will be more so by the time we get to the next assembly elections. I think, well, it'll, it'll, leave, a, it'll leave the Liberal Democrats much more space to promote the radical policies that we have for Wales and, and, and onwards into the general elections next time in, uh, across the United Kingdom. Where do you think is a is a reasonable prospect for a liberal democratic gain then in in senate 21 do you think there's any constituencies you see you'll see yourself pick up or do you think you'll need to rely on the the list i think still think that both brecon and randisher and montgomeryshire and kerry digging for that matter are in play no no question at all assembly elections are very different i mean i think that showed it that showed it last time and and people are they do vote differentially there's much more i think the assembly is people take a much more um, nuanced view of politics. They actually look at the candidates more, perhaps more closely, particularly on the constituency. I think Kirsty Williams proved that last time and you know, great predictions of her losing her seat. And what did she do? She troubled her majority. So I think they're still very much, particularly in the post-Brexit phase, where a lot of what's happening now with the Conservatives in particular, what they're doing with agriculture post-Brexit and so on, means that they're, the foundations of their vote are, in the rural community particularly are very shaky. So I, I, I do think very much so that in mid Wales there's definite prospects, and I certainly wouldn't write off Cardiff Central at all. Uh, I think that there's a great deal to play for. Leonid, where can we expect the famous Lib Dem winning here signs to appear next? Well, you'll be seeing um, winning here signs all across um, Mid and West Wales in the seats that uh, James mentioned. Um, you'll be seeing them in Cardiff. And actually, um, what I've been really pleased to see over the last year or 18 months is how many um, local community campaign teams have started springing up all over the country in places where we've never had a tradition um, before. So I'm pleased to see that, you know, when you look at the regional list seats, it's not going to be a question of relying on one or two constituencies actually um, across the whole of Wales. Um, we've got enthusiastic um, new uh, campaigners um, just really excited to get out there. Once of course they are able to leave the house and uh, get out there and talk to the voters in person. Um, we've got 50% more members than we had um, for the um, last assembly elections um, and as we go into the Senate elections um, you know some of our members are absolutely um, you know chomping at the bit ready to go. What, what do you think it was that that caused the, the decline of the Liberal Democrats in Wales obviously from being a, a partner in coalition in the early 2000s to 
to now only having uh, one member of the Senate. What, what do you think that was? Do you think that can be all pinned on the coalition years or is it something deeper than that? There's a few things that I think um, are, you know, factors in that, but the coalition is a huge factor in that. I don't think there's any doubt about that. In British politics, where we're dominated, even in Wales, we're dominated by the idea of a first-past-the-post polling system. You know, the ability to work together is not seen as being a, um, a virtue, actually. Compromise is seen as compromised. Um, and for, for smaller parties, when you have that um, position where you work with others in order to get things done and in order to get some of your agenda done, you will be blamed for things that um, are not from your agenda. And I know that, you know, smaller parties like the Green Party have also found that when they've been in local government that they've been squeezed out um, when they've worked with other bigger parties who have a bigger budget to spend on their advertising. So part of it is about that coalition politics. Part of it is about systemic change we need in our politics, actually, to value um, collaboration and cooperation and grown-up <laughs> behaviour and not the kind of punch and judy nonsense that you see in Parliament sometimes. But also there's been more generally across the world, not just here in the UK, there's been a polarisation of our politics, which has made people rush to the left and the right. There's been a lot of extremism in the right wing and people um, have been polarising to protect themselves from the extreme of the other side. And so part of the centre across the world actually have had some quite punishing times over the last five or six years. I think as we move to the future, we need to find space to be able to disagree with each other once again with respect and um, to end this kind of vitriolic, vindictive style of politics that we've seen. And when you see that, you will see more space or debate you will get from some of the um, parties who are squeezed out at the moment. What effect do you think the uh, upcoming leadership election in the Liberal Democrats will have on your prospects next year? I think leadership elections are interesting because they bring attention to a party and they give you an opportunity to talk about people's visions. What is really important for any political party is that they're able to communicate to the voters an exciting and compelling vision that the voters really want to get behind. And so when I'm looking at the candidates, that's what I'm looking for. I want to be excited by what their ideas are. I want to be able to to think, yes, that's that's exactly what I want to go and tell people about. I want to tell the world about um, what modern liberalism is going to be like. It isn't um, uh, something that is going to be easy to do, but actually people are looking for hope. And if we have, can find ourselves a candidate that can communicate that hope to people, then I think that we can do really, really well. So is, is the Liberal Democratic message next year going to be one solely of, of hope, or is it going to be one that tries to hold the Welsh government to account? How hard is that to do when you know, one of your most senior members is the education secretary. You know me, I am always um, for um, holding government to account. I don't think that good governance has anything to fear from honest scrutiny. Honest scrutiny improves government by um, keeping it honest and keeping it on its toes. And I will always do that. Um, Kirsty knows that I will tell her myself if there's something that she's done that I don't agree with. Um, and I always have. Um, but the truth is that um, where um, Kirsty has um, shown real leadership in things like like uh, the new curriculum, a very new style of curriculum, um, the support package that we have for students in Wales, all of those things have come from Liberal Democrat policies and all of those that I think have been really progressive and interesting uh, developed in our education system. And as someone who's got children going through the education system now, um, I'm really pleased with um, the, the changes that she's delivered. So I can feel proud to talk about them, but that's not to say I won't hold um, to account those things where I think that there have been challenges. It's James, that, can you hear us? It's that famous Powist Wi-Fi. Hi, hi. So, yeah, that's the joys of living in rural Wales. <laughs> what Alina had said regarding uh, the coalition hangover effect uh, for the Liberal Democrats from 2010 onwards is, is solely responsible for the, the loss of Liberal Democratic voters and seats. Or do you think it goes a bit deeper than that? Um, no, I, I think, well, I think the coalition was... Yeah, uh, far from helpful. Let's put it like that, to, to put it kindly. I think, um, I, I think one of the things with the coalition was that the Liberal Democrat politicians that were part of the government and, and the party as a whole and underestimated just how ruthless the Conservatives would be, not just about operating within the coalition and, and the, the way that they did that, but actually the, the ruthlessness which they would target our seats afterwards. And then, um, you know, very successfully, uh, a, a well-resourced um, major party was able to do that. Basically, there was that issue. And, and, and then, of course, 
one of the things that one of, in our binary electoral system, if you like, uh, first past the post system, it, it, if 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 a leader of one of the major parties is seen as being very unpopular or unelectable or just not liked by the electorate, that just drives a lot of people back voting the other way. That they see it as a, a one or other choice, if you like, and the media to an extent plays into that. They, they like a simple like a simple message: you either elect so and so to be prime minister, or you elect somebody else to be prime minister. And the other party to sell the greens and the others get squeezed in that system so that's inevitable but i do agree with of what Lenin said you know that there is this 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 sort of binary a polarized system of politics it happens it's happened throughout history it, it goes in cycles it's always usually things stressful things that cause it to occur brexit was an incredibly polarizing uh, event uh, we'll feel the effects of that for some time to come people do tend to see the world in black and white now and in fact the truth is it's mainly grey that this is going to be um, a slow process but I, I agree with her entirely that actually the voice of reason will always come through in the end There's, as long as the Liberal Democrats propose some good reasonable policies that appeal to a wide range of people who dislike actually the polarisation I think we will do increasingly well and I think that's why we continue to do well at local government level even when we've done badly in, in major uh, national elections we continue to do well in council elections where people can see that their local Liberal Democrat councillor or campaigner is actually on their side and doing the work for them. We're going to uh, go on to the Green Party now but we'll be back with you very shortly. Thank you very much. What do you think it is that's made it very difficult for the Welsh Green Party to replicate the success of the Scottish Greens, Lauren? I think the Scottish Greens have such a different politics and they have had that for a very long time. Wales Green Party or even the Green Party of England and Wales are often perceived as this English centric party and we're not that at all. Sean would you agree? Yeah I think we in Wales we've got a bit more of a, a different political setup in terms of the, the Scottish Greens perhaps uh, Wales tends to have more of a socialist leaning where perhaps our votes get picked up by some of the other parties. I think hopefully in, in this upcoming election in 2021, we've got more of a, a radical vision. Perhaps we can focus uh, on actually breaking through into the Senate this time. I think there's a lot to, a lot to look forward to for the Welsh Greens this year, next year. <laughs> so Sean, you, you mentioned, you know, there being more sort of socialist politics in Wales, perhaps. Do you think there's a, enough space for the Green Party in Wales to operate electorally? Do you think there's room for you to grow in terms of winning seats and votes? Yeah, I would say actually I think it's a vital time for the Welsh Green Party now to hold Labour or Plaid or whoever has a majority in the next election, in the next uh, parliament uh, to account. I think our socialist policies with that ecological edge on them is very different, markedly different to that of Labour. We need a more joined up thinking in our politics and I think the Green Party can offer that where Labour maybe play Cymru can't as much. These days the ecological thinking has really come to the fore. We've had the climate strikes, we've had Greta Thunberg and it's interesting to see all the other major parties start talking about social policies like universal basic income and they're really making green policies, they're putting them at the top of the agenda. And I think voters in Wales will see that through one form or another, these parties have always had their hand on the wheel. And I'm not just talking about Labour or the Conservatives in that. And I, I, the voters aren't stupid. They will see the parties have had the opportunity already to put these forward thinking ideas into practice. What sort of shape is the party machinery in in Wales that will help you win votes and win seats? Local parties across the country are getting ready for an election now. Um, for any party in this day and age to know exactly where they'll be in a year's time when we don't know how we'll be able to campaign and all the rest of it, it would be foolish to say we know exactly where we're going to be but those preparations are being made and we're absolutely going to be ready. Is it primarily going to be regional uh, lists and if so where where are you prioritizing? We're still selecting our priority at the moment but yes um, we are mostly focusing at the regional lists. Do you, so obviously I don't know how 
much that our listeners know about this, but you know, it's not so long removed from a time where the Green Party had the option to become an independent party, uh, independent from the England English Green Party and become a separate Wales Green Party. Do you think the party would benefit from that? No. Uh, sh- short, short answer, no. Um, I voted to remain part of the Green Party of England in Wales in that election, and at the moment I would do so again. I think it benefits Wales Green Party to be part of a political setup which mirrors in some respects, the political setup we have now. We're still a a semi-autonomous party. We can make policy that um, applies to Wales only. And I think at the moment, that's the setup that benefits us. However, it's not always going to be like that. And if the political situation in in Wales were to change, then we would look at that again. I think, well, the, obviously there was a vote 65% in favour of um, remaining part of England and Wales. I voted um, against that. Um, I, do, I do completely understand the view that uh, at the moment it's, um, it benefits us uh, in, in a lot of ways to be part of the England and Wales Green Party. As we see our politics progressing, hopefully getting some uh, members of the MS is elected in 2021, then hopefully we can uh, look towards a more independent Wales Green Party when there's perhaps more membership and after we've built, a, a, built our party up a lot more over the, next, over the coming years. Lauren and Sean, what are your priorities for the Green Party message for, for next year's election? What are your, what should to you be the the main focus of the Green campaign next year? So for me, the main focus is the fact that the other parties have had their chance and we really need elected Greens to hold the Welsh Government to account. It's great that all the other parties are talking about the things we've been talking about for years. However, they could have done it by now. They've had the opportunity. They haven't done so. So let's get some Greens into the Senate to make sure they do. Yeah, no, I would mirror that. I think getting a Green voice in the Senate is, uh, should be our absolute priority. I think it would change the landscape of Welsh politics to have someone um, put in those radical visions. Like I said, we've been talking about universal basic income forever. Um, now the other parties are starting to catch up. Uh, we've had the we've had the Welsh Assembly for and uh, now the Welsh Parliament for twenty years. There's been ample opportunities to discuss those issues um, and that change people's lives across Wales. So I think that's a priority. So we're we're now joined by Catherine Ashton, who, as I said earlier, uh, is from the Communist Party of Britain. She was the lead candidate in Mid and West Wales in the twenty sixteen uh, Assembly election. Do you think there's going to be an increase in Communist Party support? Uh, following Plaid and Labour's decision to move towards the centre ground of politics? Um, yeah, that's actually an interesting question to ask, ask us at the moment because we have, we have seen a recent increase in new members. And what's interesting actually about the new members that have joined the party is that a lot of these members are, are young. So they're members who've joined the Young Communist League and um, as a result, we, we're establishing new branches of the Young Communist League to accommodate this increase in membership. What seems to be attracting these younger members to the party is that the Communist Party has got a continuous anti-capitalist stance. And I think, um, like Lauren mentioned, with the Greens, there's been a lot of protests. People are really actually discussing the fact that capitalism doesn't, doesn't work anymore, that it's failing working people, it's failing ordinary people. And we've seen a lot of young people turn to the Communist Party. I think especially at this time now, uh, after 10 years of austerity and then a pandemic on top of that, where we've all realised that the priorities of consecutive governments have been have been unacceptable really. And I think there's this this anger against the establishment, but also this feeling that, you know, that things can change. And maybe in the past where to talk about anti-capitalism was seen as an odd thing to do, you know, it's become a more mainstream idea. And yeah, we're seeing the that response in in what's happened to the party lately. What is the 
Communist Party's strategy then to grow their membership? The communists are involved in a lot of campaigns and have always been involved in campaigns like uh, the anti-racist campaign Hope Not Hate. We're always advocating an equal Britain against racism. Also, you know, with CND and anti-nuclear protests. So communists are involved in these issues. And I think what we do is we just continue to offer on a more conventional political platform we continue we have to continue to offer viable social social socialist alternatives like you know public ownership of utilities and transport more powers to the welsh parliament so that we can raise taxes also a universal basic income one quite exciting policy document that we're working on within the welsh communists at the moment is a wage for parents and i think that's something that's interesting that's come up in the pandemic that we have this idea that women are liberated that we can go to work but it's become quite obvious during the pandemic that the brunt of the work falls on to women again they, they're juggling working from home and homeschooling children so not just the idea of basic income but actually an income for mothers who stay at home, but for, you know, for either parent, which would set a precedent for all care workers to get a raise in income, which, you know, we see how much we depend on these people. To get back to your question um, of how we get more people to join, yes, I suppose what we do is we just keep going with our issues. As the, as the Green Party have said, you know, we've had these radical and progressive proposals and policies for since the party is established and we just have to build on this I think we're lucky in some ways of the time you know that people are waking up and having a bit of a reality check about what capitalism actually does to our society. Do you think it's ever reasonable to expect that the communist party would win a seat in the senate and if it needed more members would you be in support of that? Yes yeah I do absolutely think that it's possible for the communists to gain a seat in the senate um, for a few reasons. Firstly, that actually the, the, the Communist Party had a positive history in Wales and in the past when I've campaigned with the party, I think what struck me was how um, used to the Communist Party people were, you know, in living memory, little communities like Bidlin or where I live, the Communists had done a lot of work in those communities and so it's not a dirty word or, you know, a strange word as it is in some other places. But also because of the, you know, the timing, this this crisis of capitalism, really, that's become a mainstream talking point that offers parties like the Communist Party maybe a, a chance now, a bigger chance than ever than it's ever had before. And also, I actually think even as things stand, that the Communist Party does have a chance. You know, with the regional seats, you know, we've seen we've seen that UKIP has a has a seat. We've seen that the Brexit um, Party won seats. So, you know, although we're at the other end of the scale from those parties, I think it is possible for us to win on those regional seats, definitely. But yes, we would support, you know, we would support more more seats as well, you know. What do you think will be the main Communist Party message going into next year's election? And, and what do you think will resonate with people from the Communist Party? Um, I think the message will be that... that we have to have change and that change is possible and that we have to we have to take back control of of our lives really in Wales and of our possi the possibilities in our future um, and that this is possible you know we have to we have to take back ownership of utilities of transport in Wales we have to campaign we have to make sure that we have a government that campaigns for more uh, powers for the for the parliament we have to make sure that our people don't live in poverty that we don't need to live in poverty you know members of our communities our society we don't need to live in poverty and we don't need to to ruin the environment the way we do there are other there are other ways of doing things i just hope that in wales we have the the courage you know to vote to, you know to vote a change and to to give a chance to the smaller parties that haven't been part of the Senate before to form maybe a radical alliance. We don't have to follow the main party uh, pattern that we see in Westminster. I just hope that we do have the courage in Wales to do something different. I think we could do something extremely exciting here with a radical alliance. There, there's so much we could do in Wales. Just We just need the confidence, you know, that we, as a people that we can all do it, that we can change things with our goal. I think that's what we'll be, that's what we'll be putting forward.
I wanted to ask, this is more a question to begin with, with the Greens and the Liberal Democrats. With recent UK-wide polling showing that the Greens are very close um, to the Liberal Democrats and, and even threatening to overtake them in, in certain polls, could you envisage a future where the Greens do overtake the Liberal Democrats? I haven't seen a poll that shows that, and I don't think at the moment um, it seems likely, partially because um, the Green Party don't have um, the kind of infrastructure and coverage of the big parties. Um, we are actually struggling with that as well at the moment. Um, that's not to say that there shouldn't or couldn't be a future for Green Party um, politics in the, in the future. We see in other countries where they have much more democratic and accountable electoral systems that there is a much greater pluralcy in their um, in their parliaments, and I would welcome that very much. I would like to see us with a, a parliament of an adequate size to be able to specialise and debate uh, its subjects um, to. Um, a higher uh, standard and I would like to see um, a wider range of political uh, parties represented within it. You know obviously the Greens and the Liberal Democrats have worked together in the in the general election last year. Do you think there would ever be any scope for them to merge? Are they too different or do you think that electoral packs are the way forward? And the leader of the um, a Liberal Democrat Green group on Paris County Council because we have the only Green County Councillor in Wales in our group um, and actually that's quite a shocking statistic that there is only one green councillor in the whole of Wales at county level anyway it's very sad I wish there were a lot more because I think the greens bring a great deal of benefit to the political debate and are you know will help to keep us all honest about these about the issues that they champion um which in to a large extent the Liberal Democrats share I, I just think um I think you know, sort of formal mergers are yeah, coming from a party that's been through that sort of thing before. I, they're difficult things to do in any way. I'm not sure that's what either of the parties want. I think what, what the parties want is to work together, and they're happy to do that on a great range of issues. And I do hope we see a lot more of that. But it has brought immense benefit to us uh, on Paris County Council to have Emily Durant, our Green Council, with us, apart from uh, adding one more to our numerical strength as the main opposition group. She, she actually brings a, a lot of issues to the full, which would, not, which would otherwise not have seen the light of day. So I, I, I do hope that, that we see more of that. You know, electoral packs, it didn't, it didn't work terribly well in the, in the last general election for a variety of different reasons. Again, I think the nature of the election, its timing and so on made it, made it all very difficult. I can't see any reason why it shouldn't happen. But in the end, you know, the, the Greens and Liberal Democrats, they're separate parties. They have the distinct, the distinct identities and they want to retain that. But, but working together, yeah, sure. And indeed, with, with people from other parties, too, who, who share our, our values and, and general aims. You know, the, the trouble with our party political system is it tends to, to try and corral people into boxes. And, and the truth is that most people, very few people in any political party, completely agree with their own party's policies. They'll always have differences. And they will often agree with other people's party, uh, party policies. For example, we just heard about universal basic income from... Uh, you know, from the Communist Party. Well, yeah, actually, that's something the Liberal Democrats are looking at very, very carefully indeed. And, and you know, uh, there, there's a, a huge amount of merit to that idea. Uh, needs some more work, but yeah, it's, it's, it's coming. It's coming and we would support it. So I think uh, there's a lot can be done, but formal merger, uh, I doubt it's going to happen. I think it's just that electoral packs are fiendishly difficult things to, to do, um, particularly for smaller parties, because um, it gives larger parties the opportunity to say they're all the same. And actually, um, we should have a mature political system that is capable of celebrating difference and um, delivering um, plurality um, to our debate. That is a great strength. If you have formal pacts, you then start having um, a problem where you have a, you know, even the um, smaller parties are trying to coalesce on matters of principle. Actually, having different opinions is healthy. Having different opinions is good. Having those opinions in our parliament where we can have um, honest and open debates, that would be really healthy and really beneficial for our um, democracy. Sean and Lauren, what was your experience of the, of the pacts that the party have done? recently do you think they're beneficial do you think they're a way forward or do, you, do you think the greens will be standing more on their own in the future i think that um in certainly in terms of the next election we would listen to what um some of the other parties had to say and take it to our members and we would continue to do that in any election there are certain parties obviously whose ideals are 
too far from our own and and in that case there wouldn't be talks but certainly with some of the other smaller parties there's a lot we agree on and um, we would listen to what they had to say. Yeah, I think it's unfortunate actually that we had to do an uh, electoral pact in the last election. Obviously, first past the post is not at all a representative system for our democracy and uh, and uh, different systems of PR. We could have had like 18 Greens elected, a lot more Lib Dems. The political setup would have been completely different, I think. So I think it's more about focusing on um, getting more representative systems in place but yeah um let's work across the parties where we can uh, with what we've got at the moment Catherine, could you ever see a, a scenario where uh, the communists would work with parties like the greens and the liberal democrats on on things you agree on such as federalism and you know we've heard very positive words about ubi here as i mentioned earlier this idea of, of a radical alliance of progressive and socialist ideas. There are progressive members and socialist members in, in other parties, you know, it, there, are, there are socialist elements in play to come. I listened to a um, podcast with Mark Cooper, so you can see that there are progressive elements in play to come, you know, obviously the Green Party as well, and there are progressive elements within Welsh Labour. So yes, I think, yeah, we would definitely be a part of, of an alliance that would just deliver a better Wales for people, you know, a, a Wales, that, a parliament that um, represents the people and the does the best it can for its people rather than, you know, big business. We definitely, you know, work with others on, on those principles. Uh, Alina, a question I never thought I'd ask. Do you think the Lib Dems would ever be willing to work with the, the Communist Party? Is that a step too far? Or do you think there's actually really good ground to be made in working across high divides even further than you have done in the past? Working in formal coalitions is, as we found, very, very difficult. But I think that if we want to have a mature politics for the future, then we have to be prepared to look for shared purpose and to look for um, common goals and the things um, where we can, by working together, achieve real change. And that might be around social justice, where we feel very passionately and we know that the Greens and the Communist Party feel very passionately. It might be around um, climate change and the, the need to be more sustainable, not just sustainable in environmental terms, but sustainable in social terms about how we build our communities and how we see them. Um, um, building and growing and being able to sustain themselves those kind of issues the kind of issues that we will talk to anyone who shares our values and on those kind of issues I think both the Green Party and the Communist Party share our values to an extent. Do, do you think that the dominance of the Labour Party in Wales has made it harder for parties of the left and centre-left to take a, a real strong foothold in Wales? Yes absolutely um, I'm sure I'm not the only person on this call who will have grown up being told that you only vote Labour and that you never vote Blue. But I do think that that is beginning to change. You see, you saw it in the 2019 general election. We've seen it in the Euros and um, it'll be interesting to see what happens in 2021. I think actually people are starting to become ready for a more radical voice or to listen to people across the political spectrum. When I was speaking to people on the doorsteps in the Ronde there, a lot of them were saying, I voted Labour, but I'm considering voting for a different party. Uh, we were able to start a dialogue from that, essentially. So I think that's shifting a little bit, whether that's temporary or long term. I think getting a green voice in Parliament will shift that dynamic a bit as well. I was going to say, James, it's obviously you come from a part of the world where the Labour Party doesn't really have that big a foothold is it a different kind of problem for you in in rural wales not really no not really i mean we work very well with the labor group on on paris county council and many issues you know say it myself i think the two most coherent and consistent groups on the council are ourselves and the labor and the labor group which is which is much smaller than ours but it, it's still very coherent and cohesive and some very good members paradoxically i think the thing that's really made it difficult for the smaller parties, whether it's the cells or the Greens or anybody else, in the last few years, has been the feeling that Labour at UK level has been led by somebody who's, you know, whether you, I mean, I'm not saying that he wasn't fit to be Prime Minister, but there was a general view that he wasn't Prime Ministerial material. Let's put it like that. He wasn't a popular person across the political spectrum. Some people have said when Blair became leader of the Labour Party, that would be the end of the Lib Dems. It wasn't actually. It was a great boost because people who were inclined to vote Liberal Democrat but were frightened to do so for fear of getting a Labour Prime Minister as a result, that that fear disappeared. And I think with the election of Keir Starmer, where you have a demonstrably reasonable, centrist, sensible, sound person uh, who comes across very well, it's going to actually make life a lot easier for the parties 
of the centre and the minor parties because there, there, there will not be that feeling that you'll be electing somebody, you know, a maverick to, to be prime minister. So if you, if you vote for anybody but the Conservative Party. The, the problem we've always faced is the Conservative Party are masters at painting the electoral system as it's us or nobody. You know, you, you, you basically, it's Conservatives versus the rest. And that is, you know, in the, in the end, it is true because you have a plethora of the parties of the centre and the left and one party of the right. So they use uh, that, that message with ruthless efficiency by attacking the leader of the Labour Party, saying, if you vote for anybody but us, you'll get this guy or per, uh, this person as prime minister. But that, that tactic... When you've got something like Keir Starmer's leader of the Labour Party, it will not work. And I think that's going to be our, to all of our great advantages, all of our smaller parties' great advantages. But I'm much more encouraged now by the situation at the UK level, which I think will feed through into Wales as, uh, you know, as these elections. They're never held in a vacuum. There's always influence from the national level. So one thing we do on, on these pods is, at the end, we always ask our guests what they think a good night would be for their party next year. Catherine. <laughs> What do you think a good night would be for the Communist Party in next year's Senate election? Yeah, I think it would be. I think it definitely would would be a good night if we if we did get some seats in the regional, you know, the regional seats. And yeah, just that the Communist Party had a voice again in Wales. You know, it, it has had a voice in the past. It's been played a big part in Welsh politics. It's played a big part in uh, influencing Welsh politics, bringing the socialism, the socialist and Marxist elements into Welsh politics throughout the, you know, throughout the past century. So, I think it would be wonderful to to see that as a you know as a voice again that people hear and people accept i think it would be great and also you know just to bring that radical element that's absolutely an anti-capitalist stance just that will says that so clearly by voting a communist i think what's maybe for me that's exciting about the word communism is that it's the only word that really stands as a counterpoint to capitalism and I think if Wales could have some parliament members with the name communist on them it says it said Wales would say a lot about itself you know it would show how confident we are that we can do things differently that we are a radical country and that that word communism would make all that difference I think. Lauren and Sean what is a good night for the Green Party in Wales next year? A good night is three seats. I would say an excellent night would be five seats. It would just be incredible to just be in Parliament, I think, as the Green Party. Um, however many seats we end up with, I think it's a real thing to celebrate um, getting that Green and independent voice into the Welsh Parliament. What's a good night for the Lib Dems, James? I think anything more than five seats would be good. Yeah. Alina, do you agree? Do you think do you think that's realistic as well? I appreciate it's a good night, but do you think it's realistic? Yeah, I do. Um, I think that we want to get back to that kind of level. Um, the uh, kind of top end of the target is seven. Um, you know, that would be good. Right now, it's really difficult to predict how politics is going to play out any more than about 15 minutes in advance. But I would love to see six back. That, that would be, you know, I'd be delighted. So I, I just want to take this opportunity to thank all of our guests for coming on. Uh, this evening. Um, it's been very interesting to hear different parties and the sort of areas they can they can work on together. Um, what we tend to do is uh, ask each of you, each of the guests if they have a, a preferred way of being gotten in contact that's usually Twitter related. Is a, So we'll start with Alinead. What's your, your Twitter, Alinead? Um, I think I'm at Alinead Parrot. I might be at Alinead underscore Parrot, but you'll find me. There aren't too many Alinead Parrots in the world. <laughs> Lauren? I'm at Lauren James WGP on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Sean? I'm at Sean Thomas, three seconds after my name. James, are you on Twitter or is... Okay. Yeah, Facebook would be fine. Um, yeah, just, just search James Gibson Watt and it, it comes up. Was anyone one of me? Catching it, are you online or is there... Uh, um, I'm not on Twitter personally myself, but um, you can reach the Welsh Communists through at Welsh Communists. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And once again, thank you all so much for, for coming on. Uh, this has been the, the Hiraith podcast. Uh, if you like what you've heard, uh, please go to our blog on Medium, which is at Hiraith Blog Cymru. Uh, it's the same for Facebook at Hiraith Blog Cymru and at Twitter at Hiraith Blog. Thank you for listening to Hiraith. If you like what you heard, please don't forget to subscribe, rate and review.